Smoke a purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. Y'all know what the fuck we doing, man. Hot Thoughts TV, niggas hot in the beach, man. I'm smoking a purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. So tell me that you love me for real. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's EJ Mallet. I'm doing a personal sweet series with High Thoughts TV. Tap in. First and foremost, you know, we always like to start off with who are you, let the people know your name and exactly how that came about. You know, I did a little research, so I, I kind of know a little bit, but just for the people that don't know. Yeah, uh, my name is EJ, uh, EJ Mallet. I guess I've been doing this shit for like about two years now, of like officially, officially at high school. Um, I was putting out like early tapes back in 16, 17, I think. Yeah, once it got like, I guess, formalized with like a manager and like an actual process and whatnot, it was about two years ago so you know down here you got you know your fan base as well but a lot of people probably don't know you're not from yeah you know, texas, I'm, not, so. I'm not from texas yeah i'm from uh, i was born in paramount california um east compton to be exact off of laundry uh but yeah that's that's home for me that's where uh, I, I was born at least um, mm -hmm. i moved out here uh to houston in uh, 2009 2010 every time my parents got divorced and shit i was actually um in a leaf uh, that mm -hmm. was the first place I, I we stayed in some apartments called Summerstones. I went to uh, Mata Intermediate. Oh yeah, you with me? <laughs> I went to Mata Hollow Van. Yeah, I went. My sister went to Hollow, and I was in Mata. I, yeah, I know. As you know, I, I know sure. Houston, bro. So yeah. uh, Houston definitely was a, a place that I like kind of adapted to real quick. So, Houston is big, but it, I, I, it's, it's, it's like every thing is still so connected, and mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing about it. I got here, bro, and I moved to the northeast side, and I met, uh, well, as y'all know him now, it's Don't Ask Jen, uh, mm -hmm. but that, that's the homie. Uh, I met him, met uh, Shadow, met uh, all, the, all the early homies, Lace Hampton, uh, met all them, and I've, I've been like that with them, and, and mm -hmm. I was super young, but that's how I was back in the, in the city. You look at Houston as a, as a representation, honestly, just like what it means to be honestly, like truly black. Uh, and just be your natural self without having to fucking worry about anybody else, and, and that's why I I love using sauce, all that shit. Them niggas, they 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 have, they are like the fullest extent to what being black is. So with that being said, too, uh, how early did you get in the studio? Cause you know I grew up in the church too, and yeah. once you do that shit, like. That should play an important role, yeah. especially like as a musician. It'll just teach you to appreciate music in different, different aspects. Way. Everything, you know I mean? so. yeah. I, I I appreciate it like that, especially like the gospel influence of music, bro. Like I feel like uh, that's the that's the one thing that I uh, derive from like the music that uh, is definitely like all encompassing in my music now because. Uh, it's so crazy. You can make that shit sound so chaotic. Like so much can happen. Like so many parts. Like, right? like Kirk Franklin does all these parts, bro. And like so much will be happening, and it doesn't sound like a cluster. You mm -hmm. feel me? And I'm like, bro, that's beautiful. Take that same thing and do it at R&B, bro. You got craziness. And that, a lot of my songs even now have that same kind of element. I, my uncles, my brothers, they was taking me to the studio. Them niggas all the trap, taking me to trap house to ad studios. Mm -hmm. And I was in the church, and I was like, what the hell? And then even when I got here, bro, I was in the trap house ad studios and on. Uh, of my homestead and shit like mm -hmm. that. That's that was my those are my places. It, it honestly just changed me, bro. Like it, it made me feel, especially the gospel. It made me feel like I, I had more to talk about rather than just talking about like R and B and love. And like you feel like every, you you have a lot more to, to say. Well, shit. What was my first? I had my first actual song that I dropped was called Lucid. That's when I actually got to Houston, mm -hmm. um, and we dropped that. I was with a wave called Kenfolk. Um, and it was me, Jen, Dior, Ralph, Fonzi, Darren, uh, on the north side at uh, Hitman HQ, shout out to them, Nigel, Wise White, Lace, like, bro, it was just a big wave of us, uh, X, um, it was just a big wave of us, bro, we was, we was, we felt like we was them niggas on the north side at least, and then I dropped, uh, Waco, that was my first, like, full place, but no, I dropped, uh, Drake and Drive, I dropped mm -hmm. Drake and Drive, oh my god, that, that got the campus woke. Um, but I was, I would always be writing songs and I'll go perform them live, but then I'll never drop them. And they'd be like, where can I hear it? I'd be like, oh, it's not out. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just what I, what I was known for. And then, uh, I dropped Drake and Drive, bro, and that woke the campus up for sure. Cause, uh, even now to this day, almost 2 million streams, uh, it, it definitely like kind of just carried a wave of what, um, I can do as a writer and especially what I can do in like a short period of time. Um, so I put that out and that kind of just got everybody at least on my side and got everybody's attention. And then after that I dropped Wake Up. 
shit, they said like 2,000 playlists or some shit for, for Drake and Drive. But yeah, it was like so many people have put it on playlists, and that's what it takes for this playlist, honestly. But sure. yeah, the, the Drake and Drive was at some, I was like, bro, these niggas are actually fucking with this. So it's not just, and it was so many repeat listeners, so mm -hmm. it has so much repeat volume too, to where I'm like, okay, like I'm actually gaining traction, bro. Alright, so in terms of that now, 2020 been a little random ass year, you feel me, for artists, especially some people locked in, some people said it just fucked up their shows, yeah. features, that kind of shit. So how did that shit treat you and how did you, you know, overcome that? Yeah, 2020 allowed me to do some real creative shit, bro. Uh, for the first time, I felt like artists were at the same kind of uh, level Plank playing for yeah. yeah, like you had to be on the internet. No if ands buts about it, buddy. Like you had to, and everyone was on the internet. So like now we're all at the equal level playing field. So it neutralizes everything. You feel me? Uh, Drake and and, and and Kendrick and shit, EJ and Lace and, and 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 all these different artists. We all fighting for the same attention, and that's just the that's just Instagram users. The one thing I did that kind of definitely is gonna I feel like disrupt the music industry in the future is going to be interactive music. Uh, so I allowed uh, a lot of my fans to like kind of vote on beats and vote on song topics and song lyrics and, and we use Instagram platform to do that but like they was all just voting on different shit, colors, aspects and fonts. Different shit that just had an all encompassing sound. Uh, we originally had the plan to do an album like that but then we were like nah bro let's just take some of the singles that they create and put them on the album that we write mm -hmm. ourselves. Because um, we still want to have some other stuff that we were working with on the side. Uh, but yeah, like three of the songs that the people selected, bro, they ended up being on the album and they go off. Um, and it's so crazy because like they made that. Like you feel me? I didn't even have anything to do with that. Y'all picked the beat, y'all picked the song, and it was beautiful. Uh, and, but definitely 2020, I feel like everyone lost something in 2020. I can't say I, I gained every fucking thing. I felt like dropping music though, like for me personally, like it was just too much going on. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't want to disrespect nobody, especially uh, George Floyd, R.P. George Floyd. I, I didn't want to disrespect anyone's family. Um, or anyone's um, mourning, um, and I felt like 2020 had bigger issues, bigger topics that needed to be discussed at the time. For sure. Um, and I felt like, especially for Black Lives Matter, especially for uh, the presidential election, um, I felt like uh, education reform, like this, like uh, police brutality, uh, and uh, police budgets, uh, all kinds of just crazy shit that actually needed to be focused on their attention, people's attention. All right. So you've coined yourself, you know, on Instagram, if anybody see, you coined yourself the Heisenberg of, <laughs> of R&B. So what does that personally mean? Because I'm a break of bad fan. Yeah, you know yeah. I, I, I came up with that title in, in essence of for my upcoming project. Can't, can't spill the name, but mm, uh, I'm, I'm the Heisenberg of R&B right now. Uh, to, for the, for to say the least, because I, I consider myself, like I said, I'm a, I'm a nerd, bro, mm -hmm. and and everybody knows Breaking Bad, so everybody knows like, for Houston, bro, this is beautiful. It's so beautiful to use Heisenberg and Breaking Bad because it's so culturally relevant. Because mm -hmm. nigga, it, like, from drugs and, and money, getting yeah. money and shit like that, but it's still like some nerdy shit. Mm -hmm. So I can enca encapsulate the the drugs and dark side of Houston, but still be a fucking nerd. So it's still it's like amazing. Heisenberg be in the lab, bro. Heisenberg be in a lab, and like I'll be in the studio. We consider the studio the lab, mm -hmm. and, and and that's where we cook up. You feel me? That's where we that's where we bring, bring that heat, make that fire. Um, and I feel like everything we're doing right now is calculated from dropping the singles as experiments rather than just calling them singles. Um, from from dropping uh, a lot of the the elements that you'll see going forward. Um, it's using a lot of the promotional elements of Breaking Bad. That I know you have a single that is in the works. Well, not in the works, and I'm sure it's already been yeah. cut. <laughs> Mix, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's coming like to release soon, I believe, on the 14th. So, uh, to, we dropping it on the 12th. 12th. The 12th, okay. Yeah, so yeah. speak a little Around bit. Around Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> so speak a little bit on that, if you, you know, if you would, just the process. Yeah. Because sure. I know that's going to lead up to, you know, the unspoken that you just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, for so. sure. This is. Uh, this this is my kind of leading single uh, to my first project, man. Um, it's called Connections, um, and, and it, it they basically just kind of allows me to uh, experiment with different sounds, experiment with different layers of music, um, and, and like I was just in a lab, just just playing around with shit, uh, playing around with different uh, with different vocal tones, different mm -hmm. like uh, uh, melodies and different uh, like ad libs and shit. And what I wanted to do, especially right now, I felt like a lot of people are focused so much on like the present uh, of R and B, especially for like male R and B. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really like appreciating like R and B for like who like actually coined like R and B for as we know it, at least our generation. Niggas like Usher, Timberlake, all them niggas. Um, so 
that's why I'm really going back to them early, them early sounds, Mario, Omarion, mm -hmm. uh, B2K type shit, uh, Jagged Edge, Chinyuan, shit, my hair even dying, nigga, I'm Cisco. That, that's, that's the wave right now for me. That's the music that I always wanted to make and I feel like Connections allowed me to, to kind of embrace that. We ended the last album kind of with that sound with um, Ruthless, yeah. The last album ended with Ruthless, so we ended the sound to kind of give people an idea of what we were coming up with next. And that's what I always do is kind of give people a sneak peek. No one ever notices it, but mm -hmm. literally every one of, the last song on every one of my albums is how my next album is gonna sound. And the fucking video is crazy. Uh, the video shot by RJ Happy Camper uh, from Waco, Texas. The video is crazy, man. He, he he did a great job and we, we had some creative ideas for that too, but we gonna get that to y'all. So I know earlier we were talking about the shows and you said you enjoyed throwing shows. I know you had a real successful show in uh, Houston, I said like a year yeah. and a half ago or so. Yeah, I had a show at the uh, Darby Entertainment Center, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. What? It was cool, bro. Like that was honestly like my, well, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, can't even like jump into that show first. Shout out to Keith Jacobs, bro. Another mm -hmm. R&B Houston legend. Uh, Keith Jacob gave me my first show in Houston. I ain't gonna never forget it, bro. Uh, so for uh, Living Room Social? Living Room Social, yeah, okay. yeah. Keith Jacobs gave me my first show at the Living Room Social, bro. I ain't gonna never forget that. Uh, he blessed me. And, bro, I, I am eternally grateful for that nigga because I ain't, like, that started the way. When niggas actually, he gave me a chance, bro. When niggas actually see what I could do, they was like, this nigga's actually really good. And I started getting hella shows after that. But yeah, mm -hmm. Keith Jacobs gave me my first show, bro. Um, and then we went over to the Darwin, bro. We fucked it up. Uh, I had, it was, it's an ex I tell people, bro, when you come to my shows, bro, it's, it, from now on, bro, I'm, I'm making sure niggas have an experience, bro. Niggas gonna leave, like, feeling like they're that nigga next out. I balloons every fucking where. We had the, mm -hmm. the, the projector hitting the fucking walls, had the music videos playing. It was crazy, bro. And it, and it looks sonically beautiful because, uh, or and visually beautiful too, mm -hmm. and aesthetically pleasing because, like, um, it just, like I said, it carried that wave of like when it was coming out, the commercials mm -hmm. and everything, the silhouettes that they were using in the it commercials and stuff like that. I was using those same tones as as my performance and using the performance aesthetic. Um, and like I said, I love design, so just seeing like how shit looks um, to me is is, is is very very important because that's what's gonna get niggas attention. So when people came in, they was like, this nigga got balloon, this shit crazy. Mm -hmm. And then they started seeing the walls and shit, and they're hearing the loud ass sounds, and I'm like, yeah, y'all y'all having a blast. And yeah. people felt like the, the energy. And, I, and then we, we, shit, we did the Darby show, came back the next week and did another Darby show. Shout out to No Rehearsal, they invited me for their show to open up. But we came back into Darby literally the next weekend and did it again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we had a blast, man. Darby really, really provided some great things. And, and shout out to uh, to Russ. Um, he, I think he over at, uh, at the House of Blues now, uh, he, doing event coordination. But he, he set up that show for the Darby. And yeah, that was a big ass show, man. A lot of people came out. Shout out to everybody who came out and supported me. Um, but yeah, that 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 shit was was crazy because mm -hmm. I didn't really think like nobody in Houston really was fucking with me until uh, that show. This understood thing as an artist is that people just think you go to the studio and drop a song and you figure yeah. everything out. So like, and you being involved with apps and shit like that, how would you say like important that engagement? Because you know you like yeah. you said you created different little avenues for yourself. So how how important is that engagement yeah, through okay. social media for new fans? It's 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 hella important, bro. If you don't got no engagement, you ain't going nowhere. Especially right now, we we living in a digital age, bro. So if you ain't got no online traction, you really ain't gonna make it. Um, you gotta you gotta have an online audience. Uh, at least a, at least a, a wealth of niggas gotta love you online first. Uh, before you gonna make it in the real world, uh, and I say real world, nigga, we living in the matrix. But uh, <laughs> for me, bro, like as I said, bro, as a as a designer, as a coder, as a, as, as doing all this shit, bro, it, it lets me see different avenues for myself that other niggas don't see sometimes. Um, it lets me do a lot of creative shit that other niggas probably wouldn't think of. Like the interactive album, I don't think anybody would ever thought yeah, about exactly. that. And, and 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 when I did, I pitched it to my manager. He was like, "Damn, nigga, that's that's gonna disrupt the music industry." I said, "Yeah, we gotta get that shit patented once we got the label." But like he was like, yeah, bro, like that can literally cause the process of music right now is so like, oh, I write the songs, I do da da da. I ain't gonna let y'all hear it until because if you leak a song right now early, if Drake, if one of Drake's songs got leaked or something early, he'll be mad. You feel yeah. me? But if the people were in the process early, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, and those same people are anticipating such songs. <laughs> exactly. So if they already in the process and they introduced to the beats and is in the writer, that's gonna change the whole culture. Like you're not guilty of fuck if that whole if that you want that whole leak, nigga. I want y'all to hear the shit that y'all yeah. made. <laughs> you feel me? So like it, it's, 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 it it changes a lot of what we've been accustomed to. Uh, like shit, just like how Netflix did with Blockbuster, just how the fucking Uber did with the taxi industry. Mm -hmm. It's gonna disrupt the industry for sure. But as an artist, like who are some artists that you yourself draw inspiration from? Yeah, uh, right now, uh, shit. I'm just saying, as a legends at least, Frank, uh, Kanye, 
Usher, uh, Chris Brown. That's that's my legends. Kendrick, those are my legends. And Andre 3000, those are my legends um, that I would love to to to, to meet to, to to be niggas who ain't here. Pac, um, is always gonna be the biggest Pac fan. Um, I have an actual song called Son of Tupac that ain't never dropped. Right now, I've been listening to a lot of Brent, B2K, like early early Justin Timberlake, uh, Timberland. Missy, Aaliyah, I've been listening to a lot of that, trying to get into that. I, I, I used to not listen to rap a lot. Uh, I'm listening to a lot of Guapo, <laughs> that mm -hmm. nigga going hard right now. I'm listening to a lot of Soft Walker, Future, Baby, all them niggas. Yeah, I just I, I used to not be a big rap fan um, until like honestly last year. Um, I, I, I heard uh, Guapo's uh, Perkies. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was, that was, yeah, that, that I heard Perkies. Yeah. And I was like, this nigga go off. And then it kind of like just drew me back to, to rap. So shit, so as we wrap it up, is there anything that you wanna leave the people with? Man, please, please, just just stream your songs, man. Uh I thank y'all for just uh allowing me to even be here. I thought um I, I thank the fans for just for, for, for embracing me, Houston for embracing me. Um and I promise man, I like it and when this shit does pop, bro, I ain't gonna forget. Like I tell you, I'm trying to make sure all my niggas eat y'all. And y'all are now part of the family, you feel me? So, Likewise, so that and that's and that's the thing. Well, I want to make sure that everybody that I who who, who made my my way to success uh, of possible, I want to make sure that them niggas pockets is fed from here going out. Um, so anything that y'all need from me, make sure that y'all tap in. Uh, but yeah, bro, thank you, fans. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on Twitter, all that shit. Facebook um, on my Facebook music page, EJ Maller. That's E J A Y Maller, like the duck. You can Google it. Um, but yeah, bro, uh, the Heisenberg is R&B is out.